Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're finally taking a look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as Shredder's Revenge on the Nintendo Switch. It's a late one but there's no way I was missing having coverage on this one on the channel and then also it's been patched since launch so I figured let's see how it stands after that. So without luck hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. Story-wise then, it keeps things as simple in keeping with the genre, but it packs all of the series characters you could hope for, and as a fan, that's absolutely all I wanted. The idea here though, Bebop and Rocksteady, they attack Channel 6, and they steal some more than powerful devices. These are going to be to aid Krang and Shredder in their most recent evil plan. Now you need to get out there and basically stop them. It's all one big excuse for fan favourite locations, and I'm absolutely here for it. Gameplay then, and it's obvious, but what we have here is a side-scrolling brawler featuring our four favourite turtles, as well as a supporting cast of playable characters. That's April, Splinter, and then the unlockable Casey Jones, which requires a single completed run. It also surprisingly then packs in six-player support. That's going to be both local play as well as online, which can definitely lead to some manic action unfolding before you. Regarding online play as well, you know, mentioning that patch, I know at launch connection issues they were frequent, but now I played with an open lobby and that fluctuated everywhere from the full six characters on screen to just me, and I did not have a single disconnection. It worked flawlessly, so that is great to see this short time after launch. This though is a game that lives or dies by its gameplay, its control scheme, and I'm thankful to say Tribute and Emu continues to impress with an incredibly fine-tuned controller scheme. We have combos as the license you know, somewhat demands, but then it's reinforced by grabs, throws, slides, and then even special moves. The latter, they rely on what is a special meter that requires you to deal damage. I was actually later clued up to the fact though you can play a tongue-in-cheek animation, The Taunt, to recharge this instantly, but many of the hardcore will no doubt want to avoid this, seeing it as almost a shortcut to success and simplifying the experience somewhat. Picking your favourite character though as well will no doubt lead to the most success. Each not only features different animations which you'll you know, need to master, but they then come with three different stats. That's going to be range, speed and power. And getting a good feel for each will be a good place for you to begin. That's then the point to start dialing up that difficulty and there's three included here. If you are concerned about that difficulty curve or even continues, we get two modes packed in. First, we've got story. Now it's not unlimited continue so to speak, but it is per stage. So basically, use up all of your lives trying to overcome a location. You will only be expected to start this level again. You won't be back to the very beginning of the game. That to me feels like a nice middle ground, a classic arcade action with modern, you know, quality of life adjustments. If you want the true experience though, no saved progress, jump into what is arcade mode. That will challenge you for some time to come. Like any beat em up though, it's really a game of mastering enemy attack patterns, when to use invincibility frames and what combos in what given scenario, you know, deliver the maximum results. It was fun playing online as well with others, but it comes into its own when you can actually talk with friends and strategize together. This is particularly true for boss encounters where the end game was a particular highlight. This is all then supported by 16 episodes of action, which gives you everything from nods to classic locations. Think like throwing enemies at the screen to those that are new. Each story playthrough then is capped with an ending sequence for each of the playable characters as well. Expect though to go everywhere from Manhattan to rooftops to a shopping mall to Coney Island. It's a good variety and we even get a few vehicle based moments which you've got to expect from a Turtles game. It's the, you know, true to the series skateboards. Even these as well, they are good fun pushing you forward even if they can be particularly challenging with their auto scroller function. Finally, for the good, it also has some slight RPG elements as well in power levels. Through story mode, victory will lead to points and in return you will unlock new character additions. Think here, everything from extra hit points to extra lives to new attack options such as the early dive attack. 
My only complaint with the game honestly, it's kind of light on mode, story or arcade, that is it and I do see an opportunity here for them to deliver more. Think maybe a boss rush mode or a versus, they've done it before with titles like Streets of Rage so I'd love to see that here. That said at the same time, some of that did come as DLC down the line so perhaps that will be the case here as well because I would love to see it. Overall though for gameplay that is actually me being picky, I am not surprised by that fact and then when you look at it, you got seven playable characters, three difficulty modes, a great six player option, as well as built in achievements as well. So there's plenty of reasons here to still head back. Tribute and Dadaimu, as always, respect for continuing to deliver at such a high quality. Visuals then and it's stunning, the game opens with this incredible animated sequence that is suitably old school and it does not disappoint from there, cutscenes are often delivered as text on screen, almost still images and that feels just right for this series, you know, well at least for anyone that played it back in the 80s and 90s. And then the pixel work, it is absolutely stunning, for me using the 87 animated series as the influence for these models, that is the real winner. The animations then fantastic for each of our leads and the huge array of enemies as well reflecting what many fans will know, it's yeah again just something special, it's all reinforced then with some stunning location design as well. They are packed with not only tiny details that go into bringing them to life, but there's also tons of destructibles as well as easter eggs as well. Not a single complaint from me on a visual front, it is exactly what I wanted. Audio finally and again it's very much aiming for my era of turtles and the composer behind this one, they've done top quality work here, not only is it varied and location dependent but it truly understands what we expect from the series, upbeat, often comical, even packing focals occasionally, I liked it so much I ordered the final release. The same can be said for the voice work which was provided by the original cast and their attack sounds, they deliver exactly what you would expect. For me it's the focals that are the real winner, it adds the personality and that is for me at least what made the turtles so popular to begin with as they kind of bicker and jump into action. So the final verdict and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as Shredder's Revenge does not disappoint. It's been a kind of struggle to correct myself from saying Hero Turtles here but it must be an English thing. Brawler fans though, quite simply this is a must play experience thanks to what is incredible fight mechanics, a decent 2-3 to three hour runtime, 16 levels which all vary in design and then multiple difficulties and achievements to conquer. I do wish they'd gone above and beyond honestly with modes but when the core game is this good it's easy to forgive, also 6 player support that should become the new norm because it gets manic and I had a blast with it both with randoms and friends. The most recent patch as well then which I got to experience that fixed crash issues, online stability and a few tweaks with the online leaderboards so all for the goods. An amazing 9 out of 10 from me today and I hope we won't be waiting on a follow up here for too long. At a minimum though, give it the Streets of Rage treatment and let's see some DLC, not only in characters, playable ones, but maybe a mode or two as well, think like survival. Let me know in the comments so if it's on the wish list for you, maybe it's a pass or even you've played it already and beat it already, no doubt there's plenty of you out there. Then hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.